Good morning YouTube. So this is uh, one of the groups of 10 cells of the new BAK cells I've been testing and these just finished storage charge and I just wanted to show you how well this uh, cell holder works. So one thing I did add to this one is I've also put in one of my ribbons to help pull the cells out. On this one I actually stapled the end over here which I need to do on my main power shelf but I'll show you how well this works is you just get over here and you can just pop the cells out. I usually do like three or four of them and then I have a box over here behind me. Pop out like three of them there. There we go and then you just lay the ribbon back down over there. The combination of the ribbon and then having these uh, cutouts in the um, cell holder really works well. Yeah, so this, this batch of cells is the last of the 40 groups of 10 that I've been testing. I'll just show you how well this works if you just lay the ribbon down like that and you just drop your cells in make sure they're all the right polarity. This way you got a chance to check them too because they're not actually touching the uh, contacts yet. So I've got them all in there and then the trick is you start from this end, this is where I've stapled it and then you can just go along and you can see how the ribbon gets pulled in. There we go, I was a little off on that one. Yeah, so there I got all 10 cells loaded up. Just pop them in from the this end where I have the ribbon stapled on and run that way then I drop on my temperature sensor and go over here battery check so these are the discharge cells so this is the last group of 10 and let me take you inside and we'll look at the spreadsheet where I have all the capacities of all 400 cells measured now Okay, YouTube, here we are on the spreadsheet where I've been tracking the cell capacity of these 2200 milliamp hour BAK cells. And I showed you this on the earlier video, and then I embarked on testing all cells 10 at a time at 4 volts per cell. So I just wanted to point out two numbers here. One is that the individual cell average was 1715 milliamp hours and I had a 3.6 percent variation from the highest to the lowest cell. So let's take a look at the groups of 10 here. So on the second sheet here I have the capacities of the 400 cells tested 10 at a time and what I did was highlight the uh, capacities here the red is the highest and the blue is the lowest and then green is kind of in the middle so you can see there was a highs and lows and mediums through there and over on the side I also did a scatter chart per box box number one here was the highest capacity then two three and four kind of trended downward this data is really zoomed in if you look here it goes from 17,350 up to 17,750. So this is zoomed in quite a bit. You know, it looks like a pretty dramatic decrease, but it's only, you know, 50 milliamp hours difference here between the uh, lines. But anyway, the average for the 10 parallel cells came out to 17,537 which is almost 40 milliamp hours per cell higher than the individual tests. And then the other thing was the variation between the highest and the lowest group of 10 was about half of the individual variation, about 1.8%. There were two reasons I did 10 cells at a time. The main one is that my battery packs take 20 cells or a 20p pack. So if I take a 10p and a 10p and put them together, I have a 20p pack or module, which is what I need. The other reason for doing 10 is I figured at 10, I would see the effect of a weak cell. For instance, if I had a completely dead cell, 
I would expect to see that group capacity fall by 10%. Or if a cell were, say, half capacity, I would see a 5% drop. And I only saw, again, 1.8%. So that gives me pretty good confidence that there are no really weak cells in that batch of 400 that I tested. So I think there is definite benefit in testing new cells. And to show you that here, what I did then was I came down below. Here's my packs. So I'm going to build 20 packs of 20P for my battery modules. And what I did was used the Excel function large and small. You can see up here, large and small are pretty similar to the max and the min function except you give it an index into the list and then I use the index of the pack to pick the largest. Number one large is the largest cell. The number one small is the smallest group of cells and then I use that to add those two packs 10 and 10 to make a 20 parallel pack and that gives me a capacity here. So Again, I've highlighted or color-coded these. Red are the higher, blue are the lower, and then greens are kind of in the middle. And if you, we look at the average down here, so the average of my 20P groups is 35075. So I've got a little over 35 amp hour packs. And let's see, the other big thing is the variation between the highest and the lowest is only 52 milliamp hours, or about a tenth of a percent. And that was compared to 1.8% if I just randomly picked cells. So by matching high and low groups of cells up, I get a much better improvement in the pack balancing just for interest, I plug these numbers here, the, the 10p numbers, into the repacker.com website and requested a balanced set of cells. And I got the exact same numbers as repacker did. So I guess if you just have two choices out of a group of 40, to make balanced cells matching the highest and the lowest seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and build 20 modules out of these 400 cells. And that, that'll work out uh, quite a bit better than my used cells. The used cells are coming in at about 32 and a half amp hours instead of 35. And they're plus or minus 250 or there's 500 milliamp hours difference between the highest and the lowest. So I'm getting 10 times better matching and about two and a half amp hours better capacity out of the new packs than I will out of the used ones. Okay, so I guess my next step here since I'm done testing these cells is I need to assemble them into my 20P battery modules. And that means I gotta get busy and start 3D printing some more cell holders. So that's the next step. Uh, what I've been doing though, in parallel with testing the new cells, this is my data that I collected on my 4S battery, and this is after bottom balancing it. I started out probably a couple months ago now with a bottom balance charge. Initially, I was finishing up the discharge tests on the 20P groups of used cells. So I think that was this one here and this one. And I ran the pack down pretty low twice, gave it a full recharge, and then I switched over to doing the 10P groups of cells. So with the 10 parallel cells, there's not as much energy that you're having to put into the cells and then take out of the cells. So I actually started doing multiple charge-discharge cycles between recording data because down here there just wasn't much going on. This column H here is my difference between highest and lowest cells. So that was staying in the 
oh, 20 to 40 millivolt range. And then the, uh, the packed voltage is actually staying quite high the whole time. You can see here 15 volts, 15, 14, 15. Because over here, what I'd been doing, once I got the uh, 12 cell holder built for my IMAX, that takes care of putting the tested cells back on storage charge. Yeah, so you know, like if you look in here, I'm I'm putting maybe eight and a half amp hours into the cells I'm testing. I'm taking out about 17 and a half, and then I'm taking those cells out, putting them in the eye charger, which I showed you at the beginning of the video, and then I'm putting a new set of cells in to bring them up to four volts. So over that charge discharge cycle the bore s battery voltage is holding pretty constant so you can keep going with this without having to do any major recharges so i did a i think down here i was down to about 3.6 volts i gave it a charge and then i ran probably three weeks or so and then i did another charge i was about 3.6 i gave it a charge back up to four volts and then it's been running probably another couple of weeks just going down here and like i say I, I started doing three or four charge discharge cycles because there just wasn't much voltage change you can see here i went from 15 180 to 15 90 to 15.034 so yeah that uh, those batteries uh, the bottom balance is holding up pretty well i haven't done a balance charge on it for probably two months now and it's still within 19 millivolts of each other there's no bms on it there's no balance charging i've just let the battery go so i guess going forward i need to build another 4s battery out of my u cells and then i have five batteries that i can build out of the new cells and then I have some more used cells that I have to start testing. Yeah, if you have any questions about any of that, post up in the comment section down below the video description. And I'll put any following uh, future videos over here on the side. And as always, thanks for watching.